Korea invented a $1,000 refrigerator for one food. Yet the country imports 99% of its restaurant kimchi from China. Walk into a grandmother's kitchen in November and you'll see cabbages split for kimjong, the 2,000-year-old fermentation ritual. Walk into a Seoul restaurant and you'll find shipping boxes from Shandong. How did the world's most kimchi-obsessed nation end up buying its national dish from someone else? The story begins not with spice, but with salt. For over 2,000 years, Koreans have fermented vegetables to survive brutal winters. The earliest kimchi looked nothing like today's fiery red side dish. No chili peppers, no garlic paste, just vegetables submerged in brine, slowly transformed by invisible forces no one understood. The Samguk Sagi, a historical record from 1145, describes fermentation vessels so important they appeared in royal tomb murals. Buddhist monks stored winter kimchi in massive stone jars capable of feeding 3,000 people from a single temple. These early Koreans discovered something remarkable. Vegetables became more nutritious after months in darkness. They just didn't know why. The transformation seemed almost magical. Raw cabbage went in. Something entirely different came out. The magic has a name, lactic acid fermentation. When you pack salted cabbage into an airtight container, you create a bacterial battlefield. Oxygen-loving bacteria die first. Then, leuconostoc bacteria emerge, producing carbon dioxide that pushes out remaining oxygen. The environment turns acidic, killing harmful microorganisms. Finally, lactobacillus takes over, converting sugars into lactic acid. This gives kimchi its signature tang. The process happens in stages like a relay race, where acidity is the baton. Different bacterial species dominate at different moments, each creating conditions perfect for the next. Temperature controls everything. Too warm and fermentation races producing off flavors. Too cold and bacteria hibernate. The sweet spot sits around 4 degrees Celsius. Koreans didn't just ferment vegetables, they engineered special containers to do it better. Traditional ungi pots are earthenware vessels with microscopic pores ranging from 1 to 100 micrometers. A 2023 Georgia Tech study finally explained what grandmothers knew for centuries. These pores let the pot breathe. Carbon dioxide escapes through the walls while blocking dust and contaminants from entering. Kimchi fermented in ongji produces 100 times more beneficial bacteria than kimchi in plastic containers. The porous clay mimics the loose soil where lactobacillus naturally thrives. The pot essentially exhales, creating ideal conditions for lactic acid bacteria. Ancient engineering solving problems that modern scientists only recently understood. So why did economics crush heritage? The price ratio tells the story, 6 to 1. Korean kimchi exports at $3 per kilogram. Chinese imports cost 50 cents. Restaurants serving hundreds of customers daily can't ignore math like that. Chinese factories in Shandong province now churn out 20 tons per day, operating at industrial scales Korean artisans never imagined possible. Home cooks still make their own during Kim Jong season. Grandmothers still teach the family recipe generation after generation. But commercial kitchens need cheap, consistent supply year-round. The traditional clay pot doesn't survive industrialization. Korea now runs a $47 million annual deficit on its own national dish. The cultural tension exploded in 2020 when China won international certification for Pao Kai, a Sichuan pickled vegetable. Chinese state media called it an international standard for the kimchi industry led by China. Korean social media erupted with accusations of cultural theft. Government officials issued formal statements, 
Payo Kai and kimchi are completely different foods. The distinction matters scientifically. Pao Kai uses vinegar to prevent bacterial growth. Kimchi requires fermentation, encouraging bacterial growth that produces signature probiotic benefits. Same vegetables, opposite processes. China even defined kimchi as derivative of its own cuisine, effectively banning Korean imports through regulations. Korean fermentation naturally violates. Here's where the story turns strange. The same bacteria that make kimchi healthy make it illegal in China. Chinese food safety regulations limit bacterial colonies to 30 per 100 grams. Korean fermentation naturally exceeds that threshold by design. That's the entire point of the process. The very microorganisms creating probiotic benefits disqualify kimchi from Chinese shelves. So Korea can't legally export to China, but China floods Korea with factory kimchi made to completely different standards. Trade flows one direction only. Korean officials tried changing the Chinese translation from paokai to chinki, attempting to linguistically separate the foods. China rejected the change. The fermentation war continues. 2,000 year of wisdom now coexist with smartphone-connected appliances. The kimchi refrigerator Demche launched in 1995 now sits in 57% of Korean households. Families spend over $1,000 on an appliance designed specifically for one food. Grandmothers still gather for Kim Jong each November passing recipes through generations. But the cabbage might arrive from Chinese imports. The fermentation might happen in climate-controlled compartments instead of ancestral ongji. What hasn't changed the bacterial engine inside every batch? Leuconostoc, then lactobacillus, then that perfect sour tang. The microorganisms don't care about trade wars. They just ferment. Next time you taste kimchi, you're tasting a 2,000-year-old fermentation engine. Bacteria ancient Koreans couldn't see, but learned to cultivate over centuries. Clay pots engineered to breathe before anyone understood gas exchange. A method so important that modern Korea built specialized refrigerators, fought certification wars, and watched its national dish become an import. The cabbage transforms. The tradition persists. The engine keeps running. But whose hands are making it now 